Hello and welcome to the Donahue Group. We're glad you can join us for half an hour of interesting discussion on issues of interest to city and county dwellers, state dwellers, and maybe today, maybe even a little national news. We'll see how it goes. I'd like to introduce my fellow panelists sitting across from me in exactly the same spot that we've sat in every time That's that we've right. taped this we show. We know our stall. We know our place. <laughs> <laughs> we like to know our place. Former State Senator Cal Potter. Sitting next to him, Tom Paneski, Professor of Mathematics at U University of uh, Wisconsin, Sheboygan. Ken Risto, Social Studies Maven. <laughs> <laughs> There's so many titles. Coordinating, specializing, assessing. Um, General Bon Vivant. And General Bon yeah, Vivant in yeah. the Sheboygan Area School District. My name is Mary Lynn Donahue. I'm a lawyer in town. And uh, things seem a little quiet in the city. Um, I appreciated the um, mayor's unity breakfast. I did not attend, but uh, it sounded like a good idea from what I read in the newspaper. Um, sort of a nice segue to uh, a tumultuous uh, summer political season, which we usually don't see around here. What do you guys think? Good idea? Well, I think what can top a recall issue? I think that's yeah. why it looks, sounds you know, so calm. Yeah. But I mean, there's the business of the city is going on, talking about the architect dealing with the police station or other, or the other issues uh, in town. It's, so it's sort of a sort of business the way it should be, probably. We're kind of spoiled by the high profile of that uh, recall. recall. Yeah, yeah. because yeah, really the, the, the business of running the city shouldn't be really exciting. <laughs> it should be moderately Nuts interesting. and, bolts, getting, and uh, getting something done. You know, sure. getting the garbage picked up and the streets repaired and yeah. the fires put out and so forth. But um, uh, the police station does continue to remain in the news. Now it's the architect um, and council members struggling with a way perhaps to, um, to terminate the architect's contract. And it sounds like there may not be anything in the contract automatically that will, that will let that happen. I have to tell you, I've never been involved in building a new house but through my work, I've certainly worked with various clients who have taken on architects and contractors and subcontractors. And it's a complex, difficult process. Um, and it's hard sometimes to get any accountability built into how, how things happen. So I'm wondering what's happening with Mr. Sabinash. And maybe he just doesn't know who's calling the shots. And I don't know. Well, don't that's know. the impression no I'm getting. The impression I'm getting is that he's moving he's always hitting a moving target, you know, build a police station for X number of dollars. No, nope, wait a minute, build a police station for this number of dollars. No, nope, wait a minute, push, do it this way. And, and trying to deal with all those variables, I, I, don't, I don't know how that works out for a man in his, in his position, but I get, the sense, I get the sense that there just isn't a real clear picture yet of uh, where, how much of a police department we can afford. Yeah. Well, it's a four million dollar difference. I mean, between nine million and thirteen million. If you're an architect, um, yeah. how big of a building you build and what type of materials you use, uh, those are all very basic, costly items that you need to have solidified before you can really put pen to paper. Yeah. What was this architect hired uh, two years ago? Same That's one. It's been a while. Hasn't Same it? one. So yeah. it was billed at. Uh, uh, Build at Sheridan, Sheridan, Sheridan Park. Sheridan Park, no, yeah. No, build at City Hall. No. <laughs> build over at 123. Nope, maybe Vandermark. Yeah. 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 <laughs> maybe he'll want to get out of the contract. Redesign. Just add on to Blue Harbor. <laughs> there and, you go. And he's going to tell me what to do, and I'll do it, but it's going to cost you money. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. It really is tough. I mean, just who's the boss? Uh, and, and what are the decisions? Mm. And I think that's still very, very tough. So... Um, I must say the school district did it a whole lot easier with uh, their extremely substantial referendum and the architects were put in place and the buildings were built and Jefferson is up and running and I understand I've not been in either of the north or south facilities but I understand they're fabulous and going to be dedicated in early November That's if memory serves mm. me correctly. See, but that process was a little bit different. I think really oh, yeah. what went on there yeah. was they really met with uh, various building principals and the Department of Recreation, anybody who had some kind of facility concerns. And then you put together, well, what would the building look like? And then you put the price tag together and then you go to the, went to the Board of Education and you say to yourself, they say, well, is this something that we can pay? Is this something that possibly is politically palatable? to people and then you put together a pro and the district did to its credit put together a very good program of going to community and getting the message out about why we need to 
borrow that kind of money. And school districts are used to building buildings, <clears throat> and cities aren't. I mean, when was the last time the city built any substantial building? I mean, sheds get built here and there, it's but... a library. Okay. But that was in the 70s. Mm -hmm. Right, and then they did put the, the addition, addition on. Addition on. Although uh, a great deal of that money came from, came from uh, um, Mrs. Landwehr, I believe, if I'm... And I may have that wrong, but in any event, I, I think just putting the process together, the school district's used to doing it. They know mm -hmm. who the partners are mm -hmm. that they need to get in and talk about it. And, and they uh, have certain uh, architect firms that have designed north right. originally. Yeah. A couple of them in town are noted <coughs> for, uh, for, for school, school. Right, school for school buildings. Yeah. And, uh, and so we've done a lot of it in, the, in, in this large school district, so I think the city is maybe just a little bit out of practice about it. And it is complex stuff. You know, there's, there's no getting around. Of course, UW Sheboygan is building uh, no, a huge, fortunate. lovely, gorgeous building, and, uh, and, uh, and that's a complicated process as and, well. Yeah, it's looking very nice as it you is. come up. It's it is. really quite a thing to see as you drive by I-43. And, and uh, the first day of the day, I finally said, oh my, it's really going to yeah, look very they, nice they, for the freeway. Yeah, they lowered, the, they cut the berm back and mm -hmm. so people could drive by and uh, see it. That was part of the arrangement. Yeah, I think that's a great yeah. idea. Okay. Speaking of buildings, um, in the newspaper there, uh, and I think, Tom, you're the one who's read up on it the most, um, yeah. a proposal for a, a visitor center that the city would build? Yeah, they're saying the, you know, the, the tourism division is currently in the, that second floor office, I guess, where the planning department is, and now they have some money left over from the Blue Harbor uh, construction, 314000 so they're gonna look to spend that or to build a uh, scaled-back visitor center uh, uh, to house the tourism bureau and also to uh, service Visitors and res yeah, service so what visitors. Point does, what, what point does an older man or older woman stay, say, well, if we have that much money left over, why don't we put that toward the police department? See, I, seemed, I, there, that would there, seem to be step two. I, uh. mm. <laughs> See, well, it, it's part of the, my thought is it's, it's uh, earmarked for the Blue Harbor construction. And you mm -hmm. can't, I mean, they bonded for that. So I don't know oh, okay. if they could take that money for another project. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I think there's, you know. Any yeah. talk of working with the chamber? There's some talk. I guess the chamber had a site. And they uh, bought it. Didn't they actually buy the site uh, out on the so. highway? And they discontinued it because they lost <clears throat> the tourism contract. And uh, the, the thought was, yeah, we might be able to work with the chamber, but it's still only a maybe at this point. Sure. Well, where, first of all, where is that site, Tom, or any of you? Uh, let's see. A, the chamber site? The Triangle chamber, the previous chamber's site. Taylor site. Frontage Road, uh, South Taylor Drive, Taylor Frontage Road. More or less near where the Harley Davidson uh, uh, place is? Yeah, that was yeah, my down understanding. That area. that area, okay. Yeah. Near where the yeah. large Walmart's going to be going? Right. That area? Right off I 43, somewhere okay. down there, I guess. It's yeah. certainly the hottest okay. building area, I think, mm -hmm. in the county these yeah. days. Well, I guess my question is if we can't take the funds and divert them to building a police department, how is it that we can take the funds and divert it to building this? Is it because it's earmarked tourism and the bond was, the resolution was tied to tourism development? That's a good point. I don't I know. I don't understand yeah. that. I don't either. Yeah. I'm sure there'll be lots of discussion yeah. on... Oh uh, uh, Yeah, well, why do that? I mean, quibbling over dollars for we're going to have to lay off employees, we can't build a police station. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, we're going to expand the tourism. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Ultimately, I think it's, it's a good idea. I mean, if you look at the whole question about promoting Sheboygan, whether it's the chamber or the city, uh, you do need some fo a focal point for which uh, mm -hmm. you can staff your or house your people, but disseminate information and have a stop off on I-43 or one of the major in arterials into the city. Um, having represented Manitowoc and you know, the Senate in the past, uh, Manitowoc went ahead and used uh, their room tax, I believe, as a source of funding to build their visitor center, which is right uh, as you come in on 151 off of I-43. And it's very popular, uh, always a good uh, stream of people, and they do disseminate a lot of information. And I think it would bode the community well to have something. I'm not saying that you need to play a police yeah. department off against tourism, but I think uh, that's what's lacking in this town is, is a place right off the uh, uh, road 
major arterial where people can stop and say, what do you have to offer? Uh, use the bathrooms of nothing else, and, and all of a sudden you find out there's more here than they thought, and, but at least you've diverted their, their, their route from going to Door County or wherever they're headed, and, and you've exposed them to something that they did, probably didn't even know existed. I'm, I have to say that um, maybe it's because I'm on the email list, uh, but that the tourism director is really active and doing lots of interesting things. Um, I think it's all a part of trying to keep Blue Harbor afloat and keep having people come into the city. But uh, I thought the Oktoberfest um, oh, yeah, festivities fest. and um, they're doing something at Blue Harbor, I think, toward a, a Halloween-oriented kind of thing. There's an art fair that they're planning for uh, mid-February uh, that I think will draw some people in. And uh, I, I give her a lot of credit for really promoting just the city. Now, what I do see, uh, I, th I think, is uh, the mayor reaching out to the chamber people and vice versa to rebuild or repair maybe some of the relationships that were somewhat damaged when the tourism uh, bureau was created. Um, and I think that's to the good, mm -hmm. because I think our chamber right now is a pretty lively group. I think their strategic plan is a good one. Um, I'm just impressed by the energy that, mm -hmm. that, uh, that, that the chamber is bringing, too. So put them together, mm -hmm. it's good stuff. And maybe this building initiative is a good way to, to really literally cement the relationship where mm -hmm. different parties who feel uh, they, they want to bring people together, bring them together literally under one roof. Yeah. And maybe they can both contribute something monetarily, yeah. and maybe at the end it will be a better building than anyone going by themselves. Yeah. Well, it's interesting stuff. So quiet, relatively quiet times in the city, quiet times in the county, except we do have elections coming up. The yard sign wars are out. Um, it's just a great thing. <laughs> <laughs> People who work in campaigns really get very involved in yard signs. They certainly do. And supporters do. love yard signs, even when you point out that yard signs don't vote. Uh, and that the number of yard signs is not necessarily a cause and effect or causes a, a win or, or whatever. Um, but I, the Libham sign machine was pretty phenomenal. And I was astonished and still am. And I've been driving around um, for whatever reason. I've been going through Keel and Chilton a lot lately and huge signs up and all over the place. But now I begin to see some Alec signs. Um, and uh, not with the speed or the, the apparent saturation, but I'm seeing some Alec signs. And uh, I think that race has still been pretty quiet here in Sheboygan County. I don't know. What is your sense of it? I mean, I know they've had one or two debates um, that have received some coverage, but... Yeah, I don't... I hear, I hear radio ads, but, uh, but, you know, I don't... I don't know what much is going on. And I'm sure they're doing something every day. They're talking to some group and doing something. Oh, yeah. yeah. I think the news coverage has not been very good on, on that race. Um, not at all. I agree. Um, one of the, the, the things that the past races in the Senate have always uh, garnered was the periodic election board forms that are filed by the candidates. The press is usually would say, well, so-and-so got so much from PACs, and here are the PACs, and here's how much, and here are the big... Uh, uh, contributors, individuals to those campaigns to sort of give the electorate some sense of who's putting money behind these candidates and these ads and so on. You've seen none of that, and I'm, I'm surprised. Yeah. So I, I would hope that in the next uh, well, remaining days, really, in weeks, not many days, many weeks, remaining days, that there's more attention paid to that race. I mean, and signs don't tell very much. I mean, I obviously, really they spark our interest in that sense that we're kind of political and we see uh, that there's activity, but what issues are really being portrayed in the, in the news media? Very little. I think there's only been one article that I saw uh, about, a, I think there's a copy of an article that ran in the Herald Times in Manitowoc, was reproduced in Sheboygan last week. But, you know, and, that's about it. Well, and, and, and I do think um, Senator Leibham's campaign is extremely well organized. And, um, and of course, the Democrats are the Democrats. But um, yeah, 
Yeah. You have to give Joe, I think, Joe Libham credit for being very well organized, being very energetic. Um, I mean, he's, even if you don't agree with his positions, and I, I just don't, by and large, um, I have to have respect for, you know, how he has put his, put his, uh, machine is not the word I want, but put his campaign and his organization together, and that just carries on um, in non-election years. You know, constituents get prompt service from him. I think that people outstate think that the, it's a really competitive race because <clears throat> it was such a close race four years ago. Mm -hmm. um, I was talking yeah. to some folks who, you know, have been doing a fair amount of direct mail um, and think that, the, the, that this is a competitive race, and I, I just don't think it is. I like Jamie Aulick a lot, and I think that he's, he's bright, he's hardworking, he's an Iraq veteran, um, he's well-educated. I think he's an up-and-comer, but I think, as one of my partners would say, I, 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 I think there's going to be a bit of a schwetzing. <laughs> um, uh, maybe not. I mean, you, you just never know. Mm -hmm. But um, If it were a close race, we'd be seeing TV ads. You know, think back four mm -hmm. years. Oh, yes, yes. Think back four years to yeah. that race when it was close and it was extremely competitive and the, the Republicans had targeted Baumgart as mm -hmm. a seat that was possible to mm -hmm. get. And there was, you know, right, on right. both sides, you know, the WEAC was weighing in. The Wisconsin Manufacturing Association, what do they call themselves, they were weighing in. They, somewhere along the way, there's been some kind of internal polling, and this is going to be a, a public pounding, mm -hmm. okay? Because if it was close, you'd be seeing a lot more people putting a lot more resources into this uh, beyond some, you know, how the sort of Freudian thing about whose sign is bigger, you know, <laughs> it seems to be going on right now. It's like, my sign's bigger than your sign, so I guess I'm much more popular. Um, there are ordinances about <clears throat> sign sizes, just yeah. so you know. It's oh, yeah. not going to get any bigger. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> there, in the rural areas, you know, that, that sort of thing. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. And, you would, and you'd be That's seeing a, a lot point. more resources on both sides being, I, I don't, and I haven't had a chance to look on, online, to be honest. Usually I kind of peek and see what kind of money is being raised and who's giving money to which groups. And yeah. uh, I just don't think that it's going to be a competitive race. I, feel, I think it's unfortunate because I, I think part of, the, part of the reason is the media just doesn't seem to really care much. I mean, but the only buzz that was going on with this campaign was Alex's criticism of Leibam on a vote about National Guard spending for Wisconsin mm -hmm. and how that may have played out for their safety in Iraq. And I think Leibam slapped that away pretty quickly. And, oh, sure and that was the end of and that yeah. was the end of that. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. But where else in the Alex, is there any traction on any kinds yeah. of issues? I, I there's don't a distinct difference, I mean, on Tabor, on stem cells, oh, sure. on abortion. I mean, there's a distinct difference between these two candidates. Absolutely. And it's really not getting out there. It really is and it, not. And it's a doggone shame that the, the press doesn't uh, take this on and really investigate the, what the stand of these candidates is and put it out there. And we were just talking on the, this is probably a good time to mention, um, uh, Ken and I both heard just coming out uh, uh, on, um, on, on a radio program that the University of Wisconsin, one of the many... Yeah, we're going to host a forum and like, what were you going to say? Oh, just that this was a poll, a, or not a, not a poll, a but a study. study. Oh, study. Media study, okay. Media study. Um, taken by some media study center within the University of Wisconsin structure um, that indicates that a typical half hour news cycle on, on, on network TV, uh, local news, so either your five or six o'clock news and your 10 o'clock news, 10 minutes on the advertising, seven minutes on weather and sports combined, and about 36 seconds on contested races. And not on substance, but on, you know, did you, you know, Green get slapped by the Supreme Court, or, you know, mm -hmm. those kinds of things. So, um, and, and why would they give free time when mm -hmm. millions and millions and millions and millions and millions and millions of dollars are going into TV coffers for these terrible ads. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I don't think it's just the Sheboygan Press. I mean, No, no, I, I think it's, a, it's, it's indicative of the news media trying to find uh, the best saleability of their vehicle, whether it's a newspaper or a television station or a radio station, but it's mm -hmm. not very responsible in professional journalism is what it isn't. Yeah. Yeah, but I, I thought, I, I did think that that was interesting, and, and they just, 
I think Liveham, of course, and Terry Van Akron, for example, whose whose opponent is not very strong. It would appear mm -hmm. I I could be wrong, but um, there's a distinct. They difference want to stay there low. Too. Sure, stay yeah. low and between yeah. those candidates. That that really ought to be given to uh, exposed to the to the electorate. Mm -hmm. You know, if I were if I moved to Sheboygan in August or something, and I think hey, I want to vote this fall, I don't recall I I've seen. There may have been pictures of the candidates, a little bios of the candidate, who's running. I see the signs, but who are these people? Yeah. And maybe it's coming, but <laughs> maybe at the it's point coming. of this taping, we're getting it within, what, three weeks yeah. of, this can of, the, uh, of voting? And uh, three weeks, I think, yeah. And, yeah, you, I, I think you're absolutely right. If you asked, uh, ran through, you know, my favorite, my favorite public marketplace, Piggly Wiggly, in the south side or, you know, someplace on the north side where people gather, and you ask them, they might know the names, but if you ask them, what are the substantive differences between these candidates, or what do you think this is all about? You know, I think you're absolutely right. I think in the in the case of Libem, well, we see him at the parades, and yeah. he's very he's upbeat. A nice guy. He's, a, he's a nice yeah. guy, and he's got a nice family, and sure. they all look like you know something out of a 1950s show, and they're you know clean cut, and they're nice kids. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and that's nice. I mean, that's yeah. I mean, and, and you're well, absolutely right, family, Joe's. Yeah. And I've talked to Joe, and I disagree with him on, on some public issues too. Lots of public issues, but. Uh, you can't help but very personable, and he's also, like you said, very good at constituent services. And so unless Alec can get himself some media to really get some traction on some substantive issues that people can think about, he's going to his, he's gonna get his clock cleaned, as my grandma used to say. Or schwetzt. My view is, is that if, if Alec gets 40% or above, oh, yeah. that's a victory. And, uh, and who knows? Who knows how it will all play out? I think the city of Manitowoc uh, may well go for Alec. Um, the city of Sheboygan, I think, has voted for Liveham, even though it's a Democratic district. I mean, that just shows you Liveham's strength. And you know, just going back to the Baumgart Liveham race, I mean, that was a battle of titans. I mean, those two guys were, that's what they, they worked tirelessly. Their energy levels, you know, looked a little different, yeah. but. Don't see the canoe. Yeah, Don't see but, the canoe. but they were they were tireless and they were good with constituents. Yeah. They were personable and they both had you know huge followings, and so it'll be interesting to see. Um, I predict that Terry Van Akron will not have any uh, difficulty with with uh, uh, Job Jose. I think that's you know pretty much. Um, you don't think people are buying this family, you know, <laughs> Joe was pro-family? Yeah. I mean, I I'm not quite, you know, I don't know what that, I'm kind of a critic of these things. I mean, what does that mean? But um, I don't think anybody knows what that means, except maybe it's a code word for if you're a Christian, vote for, jo, you know, Joe Jose. I don't know. But um, I think he might have a little more support than people. If there's no real debate about what these candidates stand for. I think people may take their cues from these various phrases and signs that are out there. And especially when I, I really do think is pro-family pro equals, you know, Christian values. And that's really the way the Republican Party has framed this argument nationally, statewide, and, and so on. You know, he might get more votes just because of that reason and that reason alone. Have you heard his, his radio ads? No, I haven't. Oh, well, he does talk about pro-family and he cites three things Mm -hmm. Related to family that Terry voted against, or, or, or the marriage amendment and things like, and he mm -hmm. also says I'm pro-family and I support the marriage amendment, mm -hmm. the constitutional amendment, and that's why you should vote for me. And I've heard those radio ads several times, so I don't know how frequently they play, and I haven't heard anything from Terry on as far as a radio ad. But you're right; he's playing that pro-family. I support the marriage amendment. Uh, Terry, he cites three things and says he, he didn't support this. Yeah. You should vote for me. I appreciate your vote. Yeah. So you might have a point there. Yeah, he might. I think he's going to have a stronger. I don't think he's going to win. If I had to go out on the limb right now and make a prediction, but I think he's going to be stronger than you think because of the, the very effective use of that code word, those code words. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I'd be a little nervous if I were Terry, but then what? It's easy for oh, me to see, say. Oh, see, my sense, he's not nervous in the least, yeah. but I could be. Just because you're, I don't know. You, oh, I don't well, you, know. well, you ran. You know how it feels. I do. <laughs> <laughs> I ran. I don't know how it feels. You're you always ran, nervous. You're, you know, yeah, you're, yeah. You're, it's you're, uh, it's uh, it's always uh, it's you're always, always a difficult time. Think, yeah. But uh, in any event, well, well, it'll be interesting. And locally, there are very few 
there are no contested elections, race, but our registered, registered, registered deeds. deeds. Right. Uh, Ellen Schleicher, appointed by the governor last summer, and uh, running, saying she, her code is retained. She can't say re-elect, but uh, keep her in office. Uh, and she's opposed by Darcy Valrath. And so we do have one contested race. And we're starting to see uh, a few signs from Valrath. We saw the Schleicher signs go up first. Um, and Garrett there again, I don't know if how much coverage is getting out as to who has what qualifications. I, maybe the day before election we'll see an article in the paper. Well, and there aren't too many issues in the right. Actually, for practicing lawyers and realtors, having a good, smooth, Over. highly efficient Register right. of Deeds office is very important. Right. And, um, and it's complex stuff because you get tons of documents in. Um, I try to stay away from real estate, but it, and it's complex stuff, and so... Um, but I haven't heard any criticisms per se of, of Ellen Schleicher's job. I mean, she's only been doing it a couple of years, I think. But uh, um, uh, and I, I think I'm not. Sure. I think Darcy Valrath works at the senior center. I'm not sure. You I'm know, not I mean, sure. If you ask people who the register of deeds is, novice. Oh, they really. Yeah, they, I mean, sure. that's you know because it's been so quiet. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Darlene retired, and, and yeah. so and yeah. she had been the, the Register of Deeds for years Forever, and years. For years and years and years. Although she had a couple of contested races, if I, uh, if yeah. I. Are those nonpartisan by statute? No, or? those no, are they're, partisan. They're partisan. That's, and that's why, why we're. Fall, that's why they're in the fall. Be in spring. Uh, so nobody's running against the district attorney. You, nobody's running against the yeah. clerk of courts, uh, or the county clerk, yeah. um, the. Um, the county treasurer, Laura Henning Lorenz. Yeah. I mean, none of these are, are contested offices yeah. at this point. There's and a sheriff's race too, isn't there? No. And the, no. the sheriff is, is uncontested. Uncontested. Yeah. So That's pretty surprising. The, the reason some of them are quiet is because, for example, the DA is now a four-year term. The sheriff will become a four-year right. term. Okay. So some of the courthouse positions are, are, will be, as this has phased in, you will see two-year terms and the others four. So sometimes they'll be quiet because they're not even up. Right. Okay. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. So, well, we have some predictions. Um, Live ham. I think we are all yeah, Van Akron, but I'd, maybe with some reservations. Not. I think Van Akron's going. I think he'll do it. Yeah. Yeah. And, I think, yeah. Uh, and I mean, he withstood. He withstood a ch uh, pretty strong challenge from uh, Zempel. Uh, yeah. yeah, and I mean, Zempel was a first-time race for him, and but it was and, an aggressive. But he was very aggressive, and he got a lot of money, and there's a lot of support, and uh, uh, there's a lot of resources brought on both sides, and and yeah. he prevailed there, and and I again, I haven't gotten anything in my mail on on that race either. No, boy, and Terry Van Akron, both of the both sides, because I, I remember that race clearly yeah. had wonderful written materials. Mm -hmm. I mean, Terry's piece was one of the nicest pieces that I, mm -hmm. you know, ever saw. And I'm trying to remember something about it. You didn't ghostwrite it, did you? I, <laughs> no. no, unfortunately. Okay. So, well, we're... <laughs> I'd like to have those skills, you know, what can I say? <laughs> it's like writing a, good, I didn't write it either, writing a good closing argument, but, uh, uh, you know, being able to seize the issue, frame the issue, uh, and make I'm, the opposing... <clears throat> Let me ask a question. Before well, we, not, real close, quick. we only have 30 seconds. How do you think the city or the county of Sheboygan will vote on the amendments, constitutional amendments, death penalty and, uh, and the uh, reinstating the death penalty and the uh, marriage amendment? Do you think we'll, we'll be better than 50% or under 50%? Talk about not getting much play. The death penalty in particular is just, there has not been, um, I, well, we've got to wrap up, but we'll talk Next about program. it some more. To be, Next continued. Program. To be continued. To be continued. Thank you.